Well guys, I thought I'd, uh, thought I'd come round to the, the Gallagate tonight for um, a look back at tonight's draw against Everton. Look, I think frustration is the word on everyone's uh, lips after that. Certainly was the case for Eddie Howe in his post-match press conference. He felt they'd done enough to win the game. I have to say, having watched it myself, uh, you know, Newcastle should have been out of sight. So close to a second through Dan Byrne. And then, look, you have to say Alexander Isak, as much as his goal in the first half was sheer quality, and it was, his finishing gets better and better. That chance he missed here um, behind me at the, the Gallagher from a few yards out when Jordan Pickford was out of the goal was um, was a really bad miss. And that would have put Everton to bed and would have you know won Newcastle the three points because I just couldn't see Everton scoring from open play tonight. And, of course, it took a... A penalty, uh, you know, after the v lengthy VAR check, after the foul from Paul Dummett on uh, Ashley Young for for Everton to win it, and you know, having seen it back, I think it's a penalty. I just don't think you should be doing that in the box. I think any defender knows if they raise their arms like that and haul a attacking player to the ground, whether the player's going to get the ball or not. And Ashley Young wasn't, and he wouldn't have scored a header. When was the last time he ever scored a header in in the box? Um, you know that a penalty is most likely to be given and um, yeah look I thought it was poor from Dummett and you know I, th I suppose that's what happens when you're putting thrown players into uh, you know a hotly contested fierce Premier League contest like that when he's only been he's only played in one Premier League match all season and look Yes, he did well against Man United in the Cup away and Man City at home in the Carabao Cup when perhaps the teams weren't on at their best form and they're you know they weren't playing to their playing to their fullest. But I think in a match like that tonight, when you're playing an Everton team who are scrapping for for points at the bottom of the table, it's hard for someone like Dummett who has hardly kicked a ball for Newcastle all season to come on and fit into the game for the for the last ten minutes and. While I believe it was a bad mistake, um, I feel for him a little bit as well because it's a tough situation he's been thrown into. Of course he would have wanted to play, of course he would have wanted to be involved and you know, be kicking himself tonight. It felt to me a little bit like a little moment of panic. The ball's come into the area. He's not been he's not wanted to be the one who's made the mistake or left his man and he's wanted to make sure he was touched tight and he's just got a little bit too too aggressive, too hands on with his approach on on young and that's obviously what's uh, created the, the, the foul and Everton have, have scored from the penalty, although they just about missed it, uh, to get themselves a point and you know, sneak out of here with a point which will feel like three to them. So look hugely hugely disappointing and hugely frustrating for for Newcastle because, you know, as I say they were felt they'd done enough to win the game. But I think you only need to look at the bench tonight to realise that Newcastle are back to a squad like the ones we saw in November, December, when you know they were down to the bare bones. It was the same eleven players playing again and again. And you know, other than Joe Willock tonight, there wasn't really anyone on the bench who could come on and make a, a difference. And no dis disrespect to Paul Dummett, but you know, when you're throwing Paul Dummett on at left back in a game like that. And you're looking at elsewhere in the bench and you know there's just defensive options really nobody that can really change a game apart from Willick that felt like a big differential tonight it felt like a big reason as to why they were unable to go and win the game you know the point was made in the in the press conference afterwards that you know at the weekend um, you know Eddie Howe was able to bring on Harvey Barnes he was able to bring on Almiron, who obviously didn't last long, he brought on Anderson, he brought on Lewis Hall. All these players came on, strengthened the team, and made a difference, and saw Newcastle over the line, line in the end. But it just felt tonight that there, there weren't those options to do that other than Willock. And you know, I think I've said this a couple of times already this season. When you're a player and you look at and you're starting the starting eleven, and say you're someone like Bruno, and you look at the subs bench, and you know you've got four or five good options that can come on who are as good if not better than who's in the starting 11 then you actually improve your display because one you want to stay on and two you know that you might not stay on the full 90 minutes you don't hold anything back where I felt tonight probably some of the players probably felt a little bit like hang on we know we need to go 90 minutes here Sean Longstaff, Longstaff knew that Bruno knew that felt for Bruno a bit out there tonight I thought he gave his all he performed really well but I just felt that he was on his own at times out there in that in that second half and it was a bit of a one-man charge from the, the Brazilian and I do feel for him, for Bruno a little bit because it must be really difficult when 
you know you feel like you're leading the charge and you probably want a rest at some stage or you want someone to come come in and strengthen the midfield and Newcastle just aren't at, at that place yet. I mean, Anderson did well tonight, but he only lasted 60. Willick's still trying to find his feet and come back. And it feels like when you look at the starting 11, there's only a, a really a handful, a small clutch of players who are actually at 100% at the moment. So many of them are either playing with an injury, trying to come back from an injury, working their way back after a setback, nursing a knock. And, you know, it feels like they've just been patched up and... And you know, kind of dragged through the season, and I've been saying that for a few weeks now, and I think that's why I feel for Bruno because he's been the one constant all season long. He's been available every week, and I, you know he's been one of the best players every single week. And you know, looking back now, he's been he's been an absolute rock. He's been a colossus for Newcastle this season, and what has been it feels like every other player has had an injury of some sort at some point in the, in the season. And when you look at the starting eleven tonight, what 11, 12 players missing again? As I said earlier, it felt very much like a team of squad, like the ones we saw towards the tail end of the year when Newcastle were playing in the Champions League and having to field the same 11 players. And look, that must be pretty depressing for Eddie Howe because it felt like he was beginning to get through the, the worst of it. He also gave us an update in his post-match press conference there about other injuries. Um, and the bad news is both Tino Livermento and Miggy Almiron are set to miss a month each, so we won't see those guys back until probably the start of May. Almiron, of course, with a knee issue and Livermento with an ankle problem, injuries they both picked up at the weekend against West Ham. So, look, they are going to miss a, a number of games coming up. He said Trippier will not be available for Fulham at the weekend. We'll see after that, but it sounds like that one might be a, a, a few more weeks as well. The good thing is, of course, is the free, there's a free week on the 20th. So, you know, there's Fulham and Spurs um, and then you would expect to hopefully get Trippier back for the Crystal Palace game which is in the 24th so he might only miss two more but again another huge blow because it felt like Trippier was very close and yet we're going to have to try and find out whether it has been a setback or not but that sounds like you know there's been a change on, in his situation because initially when he got the injury um, a couple of weeks ago I think it, I think he said it was only going to be a couple of weeks out at the time so look it's just one one issue after another one problem after another uh, at the moment and you know the injuries to Almiron and Livermento just kind of add <sighs> I don't know Listen, you guys must be beyond frustrated with the, with the, with the situation. I've not even mentioned Jamal Lascelles, who, of course, um, as we all know, is out for six to nine months with an ACL. And I think if anything sums up Newcastle's season, it's the fact that Lascelles been there, available, fit and ready to go all season. Botman's played and Botman's come back. He's done his knee. And the minute he's done his ACL, there's, there's Lascelles' chance between now and the end of the season, 10 games, and he does it within 10 minutes of his next game. Both players... ACL injuries, they're both going to be going through the operation within a week of each other and recovering at the same time and as Eddie Howe has just said in his post-match press conference they are two massive characters, two leaders within the group they're going to be a huge mess and without doubt Newcastle are going to have to look at that in the summer in terms of what they do defensively because I think they needed a centre-half anyway and then with the Botman injury I thought maybe they need two do they need three now? I mean it's ridiculous, they're really going to have to look at it in the summer they could end up with far too few defenders or they could bring in three and end up come November, December next year far too many so it's going to be a really delicate situation uh, there for, for Eddie Howe and the, and the recruitment st uh, staff within the club. Just a couple other things I want to mention. Um, Matt Target will be, be good to find out when he's back because you know Lewis Hall did well at left back tonight um, but it'd be good to have him back as an option to Hall um, because you know difficult one for Dummett tonight and it'll be hard for him to get back in the team um, after that despite how well he's played in the um, in the cup matches and you know just looking looking back now perhaps centre half Dummett's position now um, rather than left back because you know I, I felt that was just a, it was a poor decision from him there tonight and it was one of a player who a decision of a player who hasn't played for a, a long time and was maybe just panicking in that in, in that moment and you'll feel bad for it um, one other thing to mention in terms of injuries Callum Wilson um, is back out training on the on the grass, training on his on his own, doing some finishing drills. So um, we'll get a check we'll get a check up with uh, Eddie Howe later this week to try and find out when he will be back. You would suspect the Fulham game might be too soon, but um, we'll find out on that. But look, we're back to where we were in December with the injuries, and look, I think we almost need to just have to accept now this is going to be the story for the remainder of the season. And um, perhaps a season to forget when it comes to injuries and something the club really need to look at in the, in the summer because it has just been one thing after another and um, 
you know, some have been bad luck, some have been, I think Eddie Howe alluded to maybe mistakes earlier on in the season. I think a combination of it all is just not been a good situation and it's something that as a whole needs to probably be, be looked at. On a positive note, I thought um, Alexander Isak was great again tonight. I've mentioned Bruno again, thought he dragged the team single-handedly at times. I thought Isak was great in the first half. Electric. I mean, he's still scoring goals like that when for me right now, he's not even 100%. He's got 19 goals for the season, 19 in a season where he's had two injuries himself. Imagine how many he would have scored if he played every week and he'd been playing at 100%. You're probably talking 30 goals for, for Isaac this season. He's been phenomenal and I think it's easy to forget how many he scored. But the way he took that, he left two of the Everton defenders on their knees and, you know, he doesn't just... He doesn't just he doesn't just slash at it or or whack the ball. You know, he curls it into the corner, places it, and you know there's no there's, there's no denying teams are looking at him, and there's no surprise that it will be. But it'll be Newcastle's challenge to try and hold him onto him this summer because if they can get him fit, firing, and 100, uh, percent what what a player they're going to have for a for a full season on their hands next season. And as Eddie House just said in his press comments, we need to hold on to players like that. But in today's age of PSR, it's sometimes they can. So um, look. I don't think that means Newcastle are selling him, but I think it means Eddie Howe is just, you know, making sure that there's a realisation for you guys as supporters that at some stage they're going to have to start selling their best players to allow them to then go in and, and, and rebuild. So, yeah, look, um, disappointing night off the back of uh, Saturday, which was an amazing um, occasion here at St James's Park. Newcastle need to win games like that one tonight if they're going to qualify for Europe next season. The games are, are running out. Points are not good enough. Um, and you know you've just got to hope that you look back at this one tonight and it's not a game that you, that haunts you. you you know got to hope that it's, it's one that didn't matter too much but you know Newcastle should have won that tonight I felt on chances on performance and on another night they would have but the longer it went on the longer you gave Everton a chance to score and uh, frustratingly for you guys um, they managed to do that so that's it for me tonight guys um, I know not the best of uh, nights all round but um, look, you win some, you lose some you draw some, you have games like that um, maybe we'll go back to 4-3s and 5-4s and 4-4s, they were a bit more fun weren't they? Alright guys, leave your comments below um, speak to you on the, the next video cheers now, bye bye